Experiment Nation, I have a special gift for you. If you're in the Airbnb space or if you're thinking of getting into the Airbnb space, you're an operator with multiple units, your first unit, your hundredth unit, just about to get into Airbnb, you are going to want to get this blueprint that I put together for you. Now, I want to give context of how this was put together because sometimes people assemble these uh, ideas and top 10 lists, top five, top this, and it doesn't have any true valued vetted content. What I've done is I've surrounded myself by the best top short-term rental Airbnb operators in the world. I co-authored a best-selling book with them called Hospitable Host. I've had them on my platform and interviewed them to get the questions that you guys want to learn the most from into the episode, the show, the real estate experiment, as you know. And I've also paid tens and thousands of dollars to be sitting in the room to get these notable insights that we implement ourselves as short-term rental operators. I'm a short-term rental specialist. I'm licensed to do it in the respective markets you know we build ours in georgia we have a management company ourselves we're airbnb super hosts so we not only talk the talk but we walk the walk but we still consistently surround ourselves with the best in the space to get us further ahead and this is what we've put together an airbnb millionaire blueprint where you don't just hear it from me you hear it and it's an aggregate list it's 21 pillars from short-term rental operators worldwide who've implemented this and it's worked and this is the exact same way we've been able to get results and get the same results from implementing these insights that i've pulled from multiple faces right some people have tons of arbitrage units like tj tajani some like bill faith have just a few some like michael shogan has boutique hotels they've scaled and whether you have one unit 10 units or 100 unit or about to get into your first unit you're going to want to have this blueprint that you can utilize universally wherever you are in the world we want to get this i put together we took a lot of time to put this together this year after all that we've been implementing in our lab for you to have a guide that you can leverage right that you can use and, and, and implement we've also given and tagged everybody that we've featured in and giving them credit so you know where the source is coming from and you can check out their instagram you can see that it, there are vetted individuals that we not only work with and trust but learn from because sometimes you get a lot of different information and i want to make sure i give that credit where you can find out that person and we've also if they've been on our show we've also linked the episode within this free blueprint it's the airbnb millionaire blueprint you want to make sure you go to experiment realestate.com once you get there you'll see the pop-up that says i have something for you just scroll down enter your name enter your email and we'll get it right sent to you don't want to sleep on this we've been putting these together for quite some time and i know that it will serve you regardless of where you are in your journey to you have an airbnb millionaire blueprint that has been collectively vetted and has been sourced from operators who are operating at a high scale experimentation you're welcome make sure to go to experimentrealestate.com and get your airbnb millionaire blueprint so that you can also scale to the level of experiment that these practitioners like ourselves have done just for you experimentation we'll see you on the other side Who's this? Oh, you're an entrepreneur? Oh, you're a real estate investor. Oh, you're trying to learn from those who did it. Well, come into the lab then. Put your white coat on, gloves on, notepad, and let's build y'all. Real estate experiment, what is happening y'all? Today, I got the one and only. Are y'all ready for this man right here? Jasper Rivers. Rivers, did I get it right? Did I roll the R too long? I mean, it's it's tricky, man. It's difficult. It's uh, Jasper Rivers, but you know what? Like, Rivers. I give you a, I give you an A for pronunciation there. All right, all right. Let's start with an A. Now, now you know a thing or two about, uh, you know, speaking of giving people an A or a B or C, because you have a uh, uh, very interesting. Not only have you walked the walk and talked the talk, as we like it here in the lab. But you also provide a platform that allows others to do the same. Um, but and, and you can see here if you're if you're listening to this, um, you guys may or may not be familiar with the name. Uh, get paid for your pad. Uh, that's been one of the 
Um, so it, 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 your host truly is here in the lab with us, and uh, it's phenomenal because I've I've listened to uh, the podcast, I've I've you know the book, and it's uh, I didn't even really you know until recently that oh like I just connected the dots right. You guys know Legend X and all that. So I gotta ask you because you've been in the space. You're not just like someone who's kind of stumbled upon this industry in the past couple of years, like you got some, you got some decades of, of this work uh, behind you. So when I meet you though, I'm curious, you know, uh, I was just telling uh, offline um, you're in there in the, the, are you uh, actually, you're in, um, you're not in the Nether, um, Netherlands. You're, you're traveling somewhere right now. Where are you currently located? Yeah. I'm currently based in Panama city in, Panama. in the country, Panama, not in, in Florida. Yeah, yeah, Panama. So we're talking like miles and miles away, and I just got back here in New York. Um, let's say you and I cross paths at the airport. I say, hey, you know, what do you do for a living, man? What kind of work do you do, right? What's your answer typically? Yeah, that's a that's a good question. Actually, it's a it's it's to a stranger. It's always like kind of hard to explain. Um, but in a nutshell, um, I mean, I've I run two businesses. Uh, one business is uh, renting out properties, short-term rentals, essentially. Uh, and then my second business is, uh, education. So helping other people's, uh, helping other people do the same. Mm. I, I love that. And, and so to this day, just to give some context, right. For those of us who are listening, cause we hear that short-term rental and now you teach other people, like, tell us about that journey as far as how far back do we go here? Like, when did you get started? Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Um, so the story starts kind of with me being uh, living in Chicago. I was in finance. I was, I was a trader. And um, I quit my job in 2010. And my dream was to travel the world, right? So <clears throat> I had an apartment back in Amsterdam that I was renting out long term. But as I was traveling, I, I bumped into this thing called Airbnb. And I stayed at an Airbnb. And I thought to myself, wow, this is cool. Like you're staying at somebody uh, somebody else's home. This is back in 2011, yeah. and so I I thought to myself, wow, you know what? Like if I if I want to travel, and I rent my apartment on Airbnb, then I can stay at my own place when I'm back. I might make more money, and I'm not stuck with a long term renter. Mm -hmm. I don't know how it is in in your market, but back home where I'm from in the Netherlands, especially in Amsterdam. If somebody's renting your home, like you can't really get that person out if you ever want to take control of your property again, you know? Yeah. So you're kind of stuck with that person. So I was like, man, this is, uh, I want to try this, you know? So I, yeah, my renter left at some point in 2012 and I, I, I threw the, I threw the apartment on Airbnb and yeah, bookings just started coming in like crazy. And soon enough, I was making like three times my long-term rent. And so I was a very happy camper with that situation. I was traveling around the world. I was making about, you know, just about 5K a month with with this one apartment, two bedroom apartment in Amsterdam. And I was traveling to like countries like Vietnam and like, you know, Thailand and South America where living expenses are very low. So I was, I was living like a king. And, you know, I was, like, I was planning to, I was thinking I was going to go back to my finance career. But at that point, I realized like, I don't really want to go back to the office. Like I'm, I'm really liking my life right now, you know? So I'm going to keep doing this and that's, you know, that's how it started. That, that's, you know, it's crazy. Cause it's always about what I appreciate about this space a lot. It's, I don't think everybody just wakes up kind of like, Hey, I'm going to like be a short term rental uh, operator investor. It kind of just happens as like, Hey, let me experiment. Right. And, and give this a shot. And like, based on the data, I'm going to continue to double down on what's working talk about what was the you know, you got this data you're making 5k right and and that's gross right and 5k a month about gross right so at that point are you with one property are you are you able to like what is that extra money able to do for you was it immediately like hey like i, I don't need a job anymore or was it like hey actually this is a nice little boost or this is this pays my cost of living give some context for those of us who are listening mm -hmm. yeah for sure yeah i mean i i just came out of my finance job so i had you know i had uh some savings um so for me you know that's that 5k was like 
it was enough to live off for for me so i didn't have to eat into my savings because you know i remember i remember staying in vietnam for a month and i was going for breakfast dinner and lunch you know to restaurants but it's so affordable down there you know it's like a beer is like 50 dollar cents or something right so yeah i was hardly spending a thousand fifteen hundred dollars a month so you know to me like that that five thousand dollars like was the the dollars for those who haven't traveled outside of the u.s like there's a lot of countries where your dollar goes a long way right yeah. so um so yeah for for me that was it was plenty of money and you know I, like i like i mentioned like i had i had savings so i wasn't i wasn't in the mindset of like oh i need to i need to make a ton of money right now i was in the mindset of I want to travel to a hundred countries, which, yeah. which, which I did. That was, that was the most important thing for me. So at that time, it's, things have changed, but. <laughs> wow. Um, that is, uh, that's so interesting. So, <laughs> so you use that, you build a lifestyle business and then what makes you, what gives you the confidence that this is going to work again? Right. Mm -hmm. And again, I, the reason I asked this is in the lab, we want to be like, it's all about proofs of concepts, right? So it's kind of like, all right, like, how do you know, or for someone else who's listening, like, how do you know when the data is talking to you and you're saying from a, either from a risk perspective or from a proof of concept, like, how do I, how do I know when to rinse and repeat? What was the, what were the indicators for you? Yeah, hundred percent. Well, let me, let me first say that when I, when I started with this thing back in 2012, it was a completely different world, right? you could just throw your apartment on Airbnb and you were going to, you know, crush it with, with bookings that has completely changed now. Right. Um, in nowadays environment, like hosts are way more educated. They're way more professional. Right. So you're actually dealing with real competition. So it's not the way that I approach it initially in, uh, in Amsterdam like that, that doesn't work anymore. Right now, when you, if you want to get into short-term rentals, like I highly recommend, you got to educate yourself. You got to like, you know, think about who's my guest avatar, right? Who am I serving with? You got to approach this as any other business where it's like, what's my product? What's, what's the need in the market? How do I serve my customers? How do I create the best experience possible? These are the things like any business, right? Yeah. That that's completely changed. So the, the landscape is, is so much different now. That's uh. It, you know, it's funny because I've had this conversation before. I'm like, okay, so we have better tools now that's available for everybody to use. Is that truly, does that, does that make things harder or does that make things easier? Because technically everyone has the same access. So I'm thinking like, which one is it? Like is technology making things harder as an entrepreneur or easier or for all of us and harder from the standpoint of like, everyone's got it. So now the competition higher and everyone's elevated. Right. Right. Like you look at chat, what is it chat gpt like thing like things like that like dude like what but everyone's got access to that so what do you think True. what are your thoughts is it is it does it even out or does it does that change i'm curious well i would say the i'd say the tools is in the favor of the people that are effectively using them mm. uh, which is not everybody right so i mean i was i was literally just on the call with uh, some of our students and and one of them said hey i just started using chat gpt dpt yeah. to rewrite my my airbnb description you know cuz i'm a i'm a lousy writer and like and it did a much better job Right. And I updated all of my Airbnb listings with that content and I immediately got some bookings because that's one way to get all oh, it's an old little trick, but it still works. Looks like it still works where if if you if you need some extra bookings, you just change a lot of stuff on your listing and then Airbnb sees that and they want to test it out and see if it books better now. So mm. they show it to more people. But that's a side, you know, it's kind of a side note. But but yeah, no, I mean, look, <clears throat> in terms of in terms of management it's gotten a little easier. When I started, there was zero technology, right? So I had to, every day I had to go into my Airbnb listing and I had to update the prices, right? It's like, oh, I got a few bookings. Okay, now I want to make the the dates around that like a little more expensive because, you know, yeah. there's there seems to be demand there. So every day I had to go into my listing. Now you have automated pricing tools where you just set number of parameters and it, it does the job for you. But... You know, your question is like, okay, well, we all have access to those tools. That's true. But now 
how we can stand out from the competition is we have to educate ourselves on like how do we use these tools most effectively because mm -hmm. you know you can connect a pricing tool but it all comes down to like how what parameters do you give it right it's it's a uh, it's technology with the brain our brain and experience combined with technology just like chess you know like yeah. brain plus technology that's the that's where you get the best result and you know so that that's where you can separate yourself from the pack it's like educating yourself on like how do i use this tool to get the best results facts yeah i genuinely believe like it's getting to a point where you get the quality of, um the quality of the answers that you get are based on the quality of question that you ask right and and so it's going to get to a point where you know even on, on a platform like this it's like you know you, here you are with tons of knowledge can I ask the right questions to bring that to to my audience? And that's my challenge every day, right? But I think in your business is the same thing. Like um, one of the other things, uh, it's the asking who, not how, um, and 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 to being able to to get to you know to the end goal. Um, when you think of that for you, like when you think of okay, asking the right questions and 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 you know, we talk about who, not how, uh, I think that's been big on my mind recently, not because of the book that I just read, but how kind of a framework, um, what, what's been the, the, the resounding kind of thing that comes to mind when it comes to, um, in your world, when you think about that, like what, what, what is it that, what questions are, or or what, what exactly has been key and what key questions have you had to ask to kind of like propel forward into your business? Sure. Um, well, I guess before I answer the question, let me, let me quickly tell you like how my business evolved. So mm -hmm. I started out with this one small apartment in Amsterdam. Eventually I bought a few other units like in different countries as I was traveling, but most recently I partnered with uh, my business partner, <clears throat> Eric Miller, who, he he built like a, a man, management business in San Diego to over a hundred units. Um, and we came together and started a completely new brand called free wild, where we are buying um, <clears throat> properties in, uh, in small, small towns, like in nature, like traditional vacation rental uh, communities. And we're, we're doing like, uh, you know, unique units like cabins and tiny homes and stuff. Yeah. So for this business, that's what I'm focused on right now. So, so I want to give that context um, before I answer that question. So, you know, the biggest, the, the biggest thing that we realized to be successful in the future in a certain rental space, we got to have a real vision for the brand that we want to build. You know, we believe strongly that like the brands are going to be successful in the short term rental space. Like if you ask anybody, like, what's your favorite Airbnb brand? Mm -hmm. You know, or what's your favorite brand in the short-term rental space? They'll probably say, oh, Airbnb, right? But Airbnb is just a marketing channel, right? It's just a platform where we can find customers. So people people don't uh, people don't associate short-term rental space with with a brand, right? Like if you ask somebody what's your favorite hotel brand, they'll they'll give you the answer straight up, right? So the reason I'm saying all of this is to me, like that's that's the most important thing going forward you know, to be successful and build a sustainable business in the short-term rental space, we have to think about what's our brand? Who are we serving? Mm. Right. How do we solve the needs of our customers? Like what's our niche? Where, how do we bring, how do we bring value that our, uh, that our competitors aren't bringing in our market space? How are we unique? Right. What separates us from, um, you know, because there's, there's a million, millions of, properties and Airbnb, right? So yeah. why would people stay with us? Like, and then to go a little bit deeper, you know, it's, it's also like, what do we want somebody to feel when they are exposed to our brand? Like when they walk into our units, what they, what should they be smelling? What should they be feeling? What should yeah. they notice? Right. These are, these are questions that my business partner and I, Eric, we spent, I would say we spent about a year, maybe a year and a half, thinking about these questions before we even purchase our first uh, property for, for this brand. Yeah. That's, that's so interesting because you're, you're right. You know, what's your favorite hotel, Mary? Okay. What's your favorite Airbnb blank. And 
<laughs> I, it's it's crazy because you, you it almost makes you think that uh, Airbnb has done such a good way to like w- make you white label your entire product and experience. I mean, when you talk about Airbnbs, you talk about not the brand, you talk about the actual the the model, the 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 platform, right? Um, do you think it's you know how 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 do you can you bypass that? Do you think like if you're solely dependent on Airbnb, let's say, can you truly build an independent brand? You feel, and if so, uh, how? If you can build an independent brand through Airbnb, you say, yeah, is it is that Look, the keyword? Is, is the keyword is it that you can't do it through Airbnb, or is it <laughs> it should be outside of Airbnb? Like, what's the? Yeah. So, I mean, in my opinion, like, here's how we have to think about this, right? Airbnb is not our product, right? Our product is hospitality, right? Mm. It's our, it's, it's our, it's the experience that we create for our customers, right? That's our, that's our product. Airbnb is a marketing channel, right? Where we can go to Airbnb and we can find customers just like we can go to VRBO. We can go to booking.com. We can use Instagram, you know, we can, we can do ads. Like we, there's a lot of different marketing channels, right. That we can um, leverage in order to get, to find our customer. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, Airbnb is, is a great place to start, right. If you start, if you have, if you start a short-term rental business, right. Building your own marketing uh, channels is going to take time, Right, we can't just go on Instagram, post two pictures, and have a hundred thousand followers. That's not how it works. Right, it takes consistency, it takes time, it takes effort, it takes resources, all of that. Airbnb is a way for for us to quickly get access to a large pool of customers. Mm-hmm. Right, um, so one hundred percent, one hundred percent recommend when. If you want to start a short rental business, like one hundred percent, be on Airbnb. Right, and learn learn how to operate your business and rely, you know, in the beginning you can rely on Airbnb to provide you to customers, but in the long term, you want to, you want to build your brand and you want to build up your, your database of past customers, past guests that you can market to. You want to build up your, your own marketing channels. Mm-hmm. If you're really looking to build a sustainable and, and, you know, sizable business. Look, there's also, it all depends on your goals too. If you if you have one unit in a in a market where Airbnb is very strong, you could just have it on Airbnb and do nothing else. Yeah. And you could make, you know, you could definitely make real good money for, for a very long time. So nothing wrong with that strategy. It just depends on your goals, right? Yeah. No, you're hundred percent right. Um that's that's a very, very interesting way to look at it. So so let me ask you first of all, how how are you um buying all these properties? You said outside of like every country you're visiting, you're kind of like, hey, let me just let me just buy this. Like, how, how tell tell us about that process? How how are you buying overseas? Yeah, I mean that's a good one. Um, uh, you know, like it it was it was a bit scary, I tell you. But the great thing about buying in in certain countries, like I bu- I bought a unit in in Thailand, in the Philippines, in Colombia, the prices are so much lower there, right? I bought a little studio in Thailand for fifty. $55,000, right? Mm. So yeah, the way it works is, you know, you, f- you find it and uh, you do a lot of due diligence because there's a lot of scams out there, right? You got to be really, really, really careful because I can give you plenty of examples of people that lost a lot of money by buying uh, real estate in foreign countries, right? <laughs> is it, uh, so what is go- it, by the way, is it like a language barrier? Is it like you're trying to do it from far, like... Yeah, I mean, it's just like you don't know, you don't really, you don't know the, the legal system necessarily. Mm. Um, you know, like, you don't know really know who you're who you're dealing with. So you just got to do a lot more due diligence. It's it's mostly the legal system. Like I have a friend who, you know, got scammed out over uh, out of hundred thousand dollars in Colombia, and and he had a contract, he had a lawyer, so he thought he was he was covered, but it turned out that, you know, this lawyer like didn't even know it, but the person that he bought it from wasn't actually the owner and he found out later. And so like, he didn't have anything. So he lost a hundred thousand dollars. So you gotta be, you gotta be really, really, really careful in, in a foreign country, like, because you don't know how the system works there. Right. And so, yeah, yeah, you gotta do that due diligence, but eventually you gotta make a decision and say, okay, I'm just going to 
you know, I'm going to, I'm going to take this, take this opportunity or take this gamble, if you will. And you wire over the money and then you just hope that it's actually belongs to you and that yeah. nobody's going to show up and, and say like, well, excuse me, uh, you're actually not the owner of this. And, you know, knock on wood, my units, are, are, uh, that hasn't happened for me, but, um, but yeah, there's a lot of examples out there where, where people got scammed out of a lot of money. Yeah. And so you do your due diligence and in your case, what kind of financing were you using? Was it uh, traditional? Is there some other things that we should know about overseas money that it can go further? Like what's the move there? Yeah. I mean, the, the move is there is no financing essentially, <laughs> you know, like, yeah, I mean, I mean, in Colombia, you know, you, you could, you could potentially get a mortgage there, but to give you an idea, like I, I have my, my property in Colombia, my income goes to a, a savings account in Colombia and I get, 13% interest, right? The interest rates are so much higher there. You could, you could get a mortgage, but you're going to pay like 15% for your mortgage. So it doesn't really make any sense to get a mortgage in the first place, right? The real, the game, the, 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 the arbitrage, you know, arbitrage is a popular ter term in our industry, but the arbitrage, you know, that I see is like you make money in the, in the U S and then you take it to a country where living expenses are a lot lower and then you can buy a property there. You have a real advantage <clears throat> with your purchasing power, right? So in those countries, you can make, you know, you can make a very, you can make 10 to 15% cash on cash return without financing, which in the U S like would be almost impossible. Right. Yeah. That's wild. That's uh that's pretty, that cash on cash return is very high. Um, so you, so you're doing all this as 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 because you're you're doing the math. You're like, okay, my money's gonna go further here, and then lifestyle I can get more, right? Is that is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, and it's it's also uh, it's also for me like it was really fun to buy properties in different countries so I could stay there because I was traveling around. You know, like I stay yeah. staying at your own units is is always fun. So did you have such a thing as a primary residence? <laughs> no, I I was a. You know, they call them digital nomads. Um, yeah. It's very popular now. Like when I started in 2010, it was, it was very, there was not, not a lot of us, but yeah, I was, I lived out of my suitcase for the better of like eight years or so. That's cool. What was your favorite place? Brazil. Brazil. Wow. Okay. Okay. I can see that. I can see that. Um, that's a vibe right there, man. Shoot. Um, I got to ask you, man, you mentioned this earlier. Um, you know, the, the landscape changed, right? And I know you, uh, tell us about Legend X. Uh, what's the, what's the connection there? How did that come about? Yeah, for sure. Um, so, you know, my business partner and I, we, when we came together in 2019, we started a mastermind. We recognized like there's all these, there's all these people that have like big Airbnb businesses, like short term rental businesses. And there's no, there's nowhere where it could, they can connect. Right. Yeah. So we started um, wearing the t-shirt actually. Uh, yes, sir. Representing. See, short-term rental legends. That that was our mastermind. Um, so we would we rented out a villa in Puerto Rico, and then we went to Colombia, went to Mexico, and we just got like you know twenty to thirty of the top operators, people that are doing like a hundred plus units. We got them together just to mastermind together, yeah. right? And, you know, my business partner, Eric, he, he had experience like building this, building this business up to a hundred units. And at some point we, at some point we realized like we, we had a starter course for Airbnb hosts. Um, and then we had a mastermind. There was a big gap in the middle. And at some point we realized from learning, we, we had a behind the scenes look of all these different businesses in our mastermind. And at some point we started recognizing we're like those successful businesses, they all have a certain number of things in their business really dialed in right number one is what we recognize is like they all have they have a real vision for their business they yeah. understand you know they understand they have core values they understand the culture that they're building in in their company they understand the customers that they're serving they understand what markets they want to be in they understand what property type they're they're they need to be going after number two is they all had team members and standard operating procedures in place so that mm -hmm. they didn't have to work in their, in the business all day. Right. Yeah. Um, it's the old working on the business versus working in the business. Right. Mm -hmm. So systems and team members. So we call that operations. Right. And then the last thing is they had a real, 
a real strategy on how to scale their business, right? They 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 had a, a strategy how to how to build up that that on the guest side, like how do we build up that that customer base and how do mm-hmm. we get them to book direct with us and and really take control of that customer. And number two, they had a real marketing strategy to acquire more properties. Right. So those are the those are the three things that we saw over and over. Um and you know, this is that was also based on on Eric's experience, right? My business partner. And so we we realized like, okay, hosts, we need to bridge the gap here from the people that have a couple of units or the people that have 10, 15, 20 units, but who are working who are doing all the work themselves. And there's a lot of there's a lot of hosts out there. Uh, they get into it. They they get a few more units, and but they created a job for themselves. Yeah. And and hospitality is a twenty four seven job. Like, you know, if somebody if if there's a problem in the middle of the night, and you don't have a team member, right? And you don't have a system to deal with it. You're dealing with it, right? Yeah. And so we that we call that we started we started those calling those hosts the hectic hosts. You know, and and they were going crazy. They would tell us like, "Man, I, I don't have a life anymore. Like, it's, this business is it's too overwhelming. I can't deal with this." And that's why we created Legends X is is to help people create a vision, um, develop operations, and create a real strategy to scale. And that's what we're teaching now. Love that. What are you? What's the what's the conversation now? I'm sure the conversation back then. How long has Legend X been around? Uh, we launched it. Uh, about two years ago okay so i guess you're still in the because there's definitely a a rise in the market right when it comes to or at least it it, would you describe it as and i'll let you say it the landscape has changed right um from when you were doing it you said you could just pretty much launch you'd be ready to go now it's getting really competitive what is that conversation that you're having as a coach as a teacher to your students in order for you to stay the most competitive and let's just quite frankly say be the best what's that mm-hmm. conversation like look yeah no 100 percent um yeah what does what does the conversation look like well it's you know our our program is is a week by week program so it's not like here's a course do it yourself at your own time it's like we take our students week by week we take them through time release content with weekly calls and everything so yeah we walk them we walk them through exactly you know, the, the steps that I outlined where it's like, we, we really believe that we have to set a very high standard for ourselves, for, our, for our business, you know, just like any other business, right? Imagine you start a, a bakery, right? Yeah. Like you gotta, you gotta be very professional because otherwise like people aren't, aren't going to come to you, right? There's a lot of bakeries out there. That's how we have to approach the short-term rental business as well. It's like, we got to, we got to really like learn how do we create world-class experiences for, for our customers, right? Cause what we call the set it and forget it host or the set it and forget it strategy that doesn't work anymore where you yeah. create a listing and you just put it on there. We need to, we need to optimize and set the standard very, very high for, for ourselves to be able to successful in, in this business, in, in the, in the current climate and in the future, I think that's only going to uh, increase. So, so yeah, all those things that we've been talking about, like really understanding your, your brands, understanding who you're serving, how you, how you're creating, how you're fulfilling on their needs, all the things that like every, a business owner has to think about in any type of industry, right? All those difficult questions. That's, that's how we need to play. Um, and there might be some markets where you can still get away with, creating like, you know, a mediocre listing. It's kind of catering to catering to everybody instead of having a clear, you know, vision of like what, what niche you're in. There yeah. might be some markets where that still works, but you know, by large, I would say it's not, that's just not sustainable anymore. That strategy. Yeah. That's um, it's, it's changing uh, quickly and it's changed quickly. Um, And, and to your point, we have more tools on our tool belt. Um. I guess is there one thing that you've seen um, that that you would say even whether it's from a strategy, whether it's from financing, whether it's from you know picking one neighborhood, whether it's um, you know design, is there one thing that you've seen a common denominator or multiple common denominators that you've seen has worked for for some of your students as they hit the ground, regardless of where they are in the world, 
this this will work. You just got to trust the process. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, I can't really think of like like a magic pill or something, you know, like the shortcut to success. Um, you know, I think it's uh, I think it's more. I would say it's like the mindset. If there's one thing, it would be the mindset. You know, the mindset of understanding that you need to you need to really take this business serious and the mindset of you know of seeking seeking the best education educating yourself the mindset of you know understanding that you have to build systems in your business if i'm talking about if you want to scale it right mm -hmm. if you want to be just a host with one unit or something then that's a different story right but yep. in terms of like scaling your business like we have to have the mindset of hiring team members, building systems and getting ourselves out of, out of the day to day. Cause the day to day in hospitality, if everything is in your shoulders, like you're going to drive yourself crazy. Yeah. <laughs> That's facts. Um, yeah. Mindset is big. Um, is there, is there, I'm just curious because you, you have a lot of data on your end. And again, I'm, there's definitely not a one, one rule uh, when it comes to having success in this industry, but I'm just wondering when it comes to mindset is definitely one thing if we're thinking of tactical models that you've seen works, all right. Uh, you know, what, what, what comes to mind? I have a few that come in my mind, but I'm just curious what comes to your mind first when you say, Hey Ruben, like bulletproof, um, not bulletproof, but like, you know, if I'm going to put yourself, you know, if, you, if, if, you know, if I have to, you know, put myself against, you know, survival <laughs> and I need to make this business work, uh, what are some key things that you're going to right away? And what are some things that you're even ignoring that maybe some of us would be paying attention to? Um, yeah, I mean, you're, you're talking about in terms of like business models, mm. uh, business, just business success in this space. Right. I think there's a lot of different ones. Um, you know, when we say getting paid for your pad, it could be a boutique hotel, it could be single family, mm -hmm. it could be uh, yeah. multiple rooms. Like, you know, if you were to, you know, think of, 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 of like the, Hey, listen, this is survival. I need to make this work. I'm actually curious, maybe now that we're on this path, like what model would you put your life on? <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Like yeah. that, that you've seen, you know, that you trust. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So here's, here's what I'll say. Like, I, I really believe that the, the biggest trend in, in the world is towards unique experiences. Mm. Right. And so the way I think about I think the way I think about like uh, hospitality now, it's like it has to be Instagrammable. It ha you know, it has to. There has to be some experience that that will make people want to share it, right? Mm. Um, if if that's not the case, <clears throat> so that that's kind of how 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 I think about it. Like we need to we need to not be in the mindset of we're renting out a space. We need to be in the mindset of we're creating. A, a unique experience that will make people feel an emotion and they want to share it with their, with their world. You know, I think that if you ask me like, what's the most important thing to understand to be successful in the space, I would say it's that. Yeah. Cause then you built, you baked in uh free marketing, which is super powerful at that point when people are spreading your content. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Well, that's one thing, but also it's like, People like people want to experience something unique, especially the younger generations. Yeah. You know, they, they want to experience something cool. It has to be cool, right? hundred percent. That's why that's where I think the industry is is heading. hundred percent. That's that's what's up, man. I I'm 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 curious. I mean, this industry is um, you know, it's 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 changing overnight. <laughs> like I would say, you know, it's that there's a lot of changes that are coming along. There's like regulations, there's like, you know, technology, there's, um, you know, there's a lot of things that are coming on. And I think just like any business, you got to stay, you got to be able to adapt very quickly. Um, and that attention span of people, right. You know, you think about all these apps that we have, the scrolling, the swiping, um, it's an attention game that we're in. Um, uh, and, um, uh, is that is that is that how you see it? I mean, uh, that's one hundred percent, man. Like, like, look, technology technology is a big factor as well, right? Like, you know, when you walk into a hotel these days, right? 
the experience is almost the same as 200 years ago, right? You walk into you walk into a hotel and you have to stand in line at a, at a, at a reception desk, right? And then when it's your turn, they give you a piece of paper and you you fill it out with information that they already have because you booked online. So they already know your email there and they already know your name and everything, but you still have to fill out that form. You know what I'm saying? Like that, that, and then you get a key, a physical key, or, I mean, these days you might get a key card, like a plastic key card, but that experience has hardly changed mm. for, for, for hundreds of years. Right. So, but you think about, you know, if you talk to younger, younger people, and I say younger people, I'm, I, I always think of, my youngest family member, who, not my youngest, but the youngest I can talk to, <laughs> who is, uh, you know, who's around like 18 or, or 19. And I look at how, how he like views the world and, you know, like they, they want to, they don't want to like in some hotel rooms, you, you still have that old school telephone, you know, with, yeah. with a line on it like that. He doesn't know how to use that. <laughs> you know, he'll, he'll see that and be like, what, what is that? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's, yeah. So we gotta, you know, and there's some really there's some really interesting hotels out there that are doing like really cool stuff. Right. Yeah. One of my favorites is 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 the Citizen M. It's mm. called the Citizen M. And check it out. They they have tiny rooms, very, very small rooms. Okay. But it's so clever how they designed it and everything has is tech by technology. You have an iPad that controls the entire room. You go to the bathroom, you can choose between five different lights. Right. Mm. You can you can have a purple, you can have a yellow, like you're in the shower, you can have different colors, like you can control the, you know, there's three different blinds that you can control with the iPad. And they call their guests citizens. Right. And this goes back to like building building the brand, right? Of like, you know, how people go to uh, Burning Man, they call themselves burners. Yeah. Like if if you can if you can get people to call themselves that, like after your brand, like that's that's really powerful, right? Yeah. So, you know, in this hotel, you see it everywhere. You see the word citizen, like our citizens do this and our citizens like this. And there's a social area where, where it's really fun to hang out. There's living rooms with where you can play board games. There's books. So the rooms are tiny, but the social areas are, are super cool. And everything is around technology. You can check in. You don't need to talk to anybody. There's a, there's a, there's a computer that you can check in with. You know, that's an example of of like in you know it's in innovation right yeah but that's it's still pretty rare in in with hotels in in my opinion right yeah. so yeah it's 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 um it's interesting because uh, would you say though that there is a place for i mean that's why they're still in business but i mean would you agree that there's there's a reason they've been around for a long time and that there, uh, the other side of the argument is that you know it works uh in and for because you know, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah. Do you think it works and that, or do you think that we're in a position where you think everything is going to get wiped up and, and, and they're going to, it's a dying kind of asset class? Oh, no, 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 absolutely not. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I'm just, I'm just seeing, I'm just seeing that the, the, the short term rental space with all the technology, right. Where now, you know, if somebody books our, our free, one of our free wild uh, properties right now, mm -hmm you know how the technology is like they could go through an entire stay without us having to do anything manual. Mm. Right. So they book, they let's say they book on Airbnb, right. They get an automated message. It has, you know, it has all the information and then it has automatically a, a, a security code, a door code gets generated, right. It gets sent out to them automatically. So they have right. access to the unit, right. We have automated messages throughout their stay. Like yeah. if nothing comes up, right? If they if there's no if, if there's no like uh challenges that we have to deal with, they they can go through the entire process of booking, staying, and 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 going back home without us having to do anything manual mm -hmm. on our on the management side. Of course, like the cleaners have to come in and clean and you know, but in a fire of management, like it's all it's all like fully automated. Yeah. Right. So, you know, I see, I see this short of rental space as it's an opportunity because it's young. Like we can, we can shape it, you know, we can, we can innovate, we can put, we can take a different approach. I mean, of course, hotels will always exist and, you know, the, <clears throat> but I think 
that's you know what's exciting to me is like how do we how do we create a, a new type of experience a yeah. modern type of experience right so that's that's what that's what is interesting to me yeah I mean, you're, you're you want to catch the new wave because they're that's what they're gonna get familiar with and that's what they're gonna adopt um and so that that makes sense to me as far as uh going the modern route um that's dope man I, what's what do you think's next for this whole industry man like i mean we're kind of talking about it now i'm seeing a lot more midterm hotel uh midterm rentals i'm seeing boutique hotels is popping up like what do you where do, what do you see that i'm not seeing i'm curious yeah i mean there's there's a lot there's a lot happening right there's a lot of there's a lot, there's a number of trends going on in in the in the in the world, I think, well, you know, we touched on digital nomads, right? So I see a big, a big area of opportunity in the sort of the co-living temporarily living space, right? You see this quite a bit now where you will have a building or even just even a home with rooms that you can rent for two weeks or for three weeks. And, yeah. you know, there's a space where you can work. And so I think there's, I think there's a, there's that side of like, how do we cater to people getting, uh, more remote and less tied to one location. Um, so that's one thing. Um, I would say um, some other things. Let me let me think. Um, I had another good one. I kind of lost my uh, lost my chain yeah, of thought. Co-living. You're you're talking about yeah. co-living. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, oh, you were you were saying about like trends, right? Like midterm what, what, rentals. What yeah, midterm rentals, like. That we see, we see a lot of our students are getting a lot of success with, uh, mid, you know, kind of one month, two month type of stay. I think, I think it has to do with the same kind of trend, you know, where people are like, hey, let's live in one city for a couple months and then mm -hmm. go to another city for a couple months, you know. So, so you know, you know, Brian Chesky talks about this a lot, how he thinks that in the future, like a small percentage of of people are actually going to offices, right? So mm -hmm. we're going to have a lot more freedom to kind of move around. Um, yeah. So I'd say, I'd say that's one thing. And then um, I also feel like the whole, the whole hospitality space is kind of um, the, the borders are getting a little gray, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah. Like 10 years ago, you had an Airbnb it was an Airbnb, it had nothing to do with a hotel, right? Those yeah. were very, very separated, right? You had long-term rentals, you had, like an Airbnb and then you had hotels and then yeah, you still, you already had like, of course, the traditional vacation rental vacation rentals that back in the day, it was like you booked them week by week. I mean, you're going on the holiday. Right. Yeah. But like now, like it's all, it's all like colliding, you know, there's, there's kind of hotels that are kind of like Airbnbs or, mm -hmm. or not like, you know, it's, it's everything in, in, in the middle now. So it's like, I feel like the borders aren't as clear cut anymore between you know, short-term rental and, and a vacation rental and a hotel, boutique hotel, um, long-term, mid-term, like there's so many different models now. Yeah. Have you ever, uh, I don't know, again, what your personal situation right now is, but have you ever looked into getting into multiple doors in one location? And if so, is there one that you would pick over the other? No, I mean, our focus is really uh, unique um, properties. Yeah. Like, so we're mm. thinking like cabins, we're thinking tiny homes, we're thinking mm. tree houses, like domes, like that in nature. Right. That's, that's really the type of experience that, that, you know, that excites me because, you know, like one thing I will say is like, if you want to start, you know, the hospitality business, like for me, like I want to, I want to do something cool where I want to stay myself. Yeah. You know what I mean? If I don't want to stay there, then I don't really want to, you know, rent it out either. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a good, that's a good call. I mean, it's, it's, you also, it's, it's very lifestyle driven as well. Right. And you can kind of bake that in if you do it the right way, kind of like what you do, where you kind of like, Hey, if I'm going to own it and I'm, I'm going to have to like it, if I like it, chances are other people will like it. And if I can go to a cool place, then chances are people are also going to want to go to a cool place in a great location. So, um, that's awesome. What do you, what do you think is the, uh, um, again, I appreciate you coming in and it's so funny as I was listening to, I was just, I was just taking in your, your brand's name and it just occurred to me, call me slow, but define overnight success. Cause I think I, I, I think I finally just got it. Like, that's crazy. I just put it together. 
Well, how'd you come up with the overnight success brand name and what, and what does it mean? So we make sure that I'm thinking the right thing. <laughs> well, okay. So it doesn't mean that you're going to be successful overnight, right? Yeah. Uh, that's not what it means, right? It's, um, yeah, obviously it ties into, you know, overnight, you know, overnight stays, right? That's crazy. Um, it's actually like a buddy of mine. He uh, came up with it uh, while I was staying at my own unit in Colombia, and he he was visiting, and he's a uh, he's that he does that for a profession. Like he that's his that's his job. He comes up with cool names for companies. Especially. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. Oh dude, no, nah, he nailed it. I was like, oh man, that's crazy. Because at first it's so funny because you know our show we, you know, typically it's we've had some entrepreneurs come in there, but at first coming in, when you, when I saw it come in, I was like, what's overnight success. Like, um, and I didn't connect the dots until I realized it was you. Um, but the brand name I was thinking, cause we've had some people who are like, Oh, like they talk about this and that. And I'm thinking this is like a, you know, entrepreneurship overnight success. I'm like, well, I don't know, man. It's about the process. It's all about the systems. I don't know about <laughs> overnight success, but then I was like, yeah. wow. And actually just hit me on the show. Honestly, I was going to ask you, uh, that's crazy. That's dope ass brand name right there. Overnight success. That's right. You get paid for your pad. Boom. Just like that. I Boom. love that. What's next? That's What's nice. next for you, man? I mean, you got you. You've been into the space for a decade now. Uh, you know, what's the call to action? What's happening with you and your community? What are you tapping into next, man? I feel like you, you know, you got overnight success doesn't happen overnight, baby. But maybe in your case, it does. So what's up? <laughs> what you got going on? <laughs> Yeah. I mean, you know, like, so we have two businesses, right? Overnight success is the educational side. Like, you know, like we're, we're very passionate about helping other people, you know, so that's, that's our focus there. Um, for, as far as free wild, it's, that's a whole, you know, we see free wild as, as a, you know, let's say like the Marriott or the, the four seasons of the short term rental space, not necessarily not, not similar type of brand, but like yeah. the standards, right. Yeah. The, the standards, the expectations, right? I mean, we we are pretty ambitious. Like we wanna, we want in the next five to ten years, we wanna buy twenty to twenty five um, tiny home communities or unique property communities of unique properties uh, across the U.S. Eventually, uh, internationally, and our vision, our dream is that one day, you know, people that stay out of properties are gonna call, call themselves wilders, you know, oh, just nice. like the. Yeah, just wilders, right? So our brand is free wild. And mm -hmm. there's a whole idea behind that of giving people the option to be free or wild. And then the wild option means like, we're not going to play with our devices. We're going to play board games. We're going to play music. We're going to sit around the, the campfire, drink some whiskey, right? That That's the wild side. And the, and, the, and the free side is like, hey, if you have to work, we do have a fast internet connection and a laptop friendly workspace, right? Mm. But use it intentionally, right? And then go wild. So once you disconnect from your device, you go wild and you connect with your your friends or your loved ones and and, yeah. and you spend quality time together like in the old days, like without technical without the all these devices that run our lives. That's interesting. I that's really cool by the way. I feel like you could be you you could you could crush that and 10x that doing like um while the retreats the only the only thing i was i was gonna say take a picture of it and post it on social but then that would like defeat the purpose of being <laughs> wild. wild i'm like exactly my mind went there right away right how do i capture this moment uh but the retreat would be interesting like any building a community that would find your type of properties or experiences um as wilders and then be able to to con connect at these specific wilder sites that'd be oof, yeah man shoot that's that's a vision that's a vision you know so that's awesome man well i appreciate you sharing your your executed vision already that brought you here uh not to be confused with the overnight any type of overnight success because you've been at this for <laughs> uh you know over a decade now and you have a very respectable uh, podcast brand and book here and if you're listening uh, you know i'm right here in the lab uh with Jesper and and you know he's got his books overlooking uh you know his shoulder on the on his on his left shoulder there um you know those are some solid you guys want to just tap into those we'll make sure to include those in the show notes there but um i guess the other one is that is that more of a uh like a booklet or is that uh what's the the black book right 
Yeah. So there's behind me is my, my book get paid for your pad. That's mm -hmm. how I got into the space, right. As yeah. an educator. Um, What's next to it is actually our Legends X notebook. Yeah. So notebook. when you join Legends X, we give we we sent you a bag of goodies. So you have a a, a pen. Um, we have a notebook and a t-shirt and like you know a bunch yeah. of bunch of goodies. Yeah. Definitely, man. Oh, that's 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 what's up, man. Shout out to Legend X, man. Got that in for sure. Uh, listen, I want to thank you for coming on our platform on in in the lab as we call it. Uh, I want to make sure that, you know, you talk about uh, Legend X, you talk about your book, uh, where are you most active? Where can we tap in if you want to hear more? Where do we even join this mastermind um, you know, community of yours? That's very highly thought of, by the way. This is not just one. This is when people, when you say, you know, uh, you know, Legend X, people, people know what's up in this space. So, um, you know, you have it here. The, the man is here. So where do we tap in? Uh, where do we follow? Where do, where can we get in touch with you? Yeah, for sure. So uh, if you want to learn more about our educational products, you can go to overnightsuccess.io. If you want to check out our new business, like uh, we are just about to launch our new website, freewild.com. So F-R-E-E-W-Y-L-D. Um, <clears throat> if you want to check out our, our, our brand, we, uh, we have like a coming soon because we're renovating our properties to rebrand them as free wild. So we're officially launching our brand uh, in June. Um, so people can subscribe to, uh, to our newsletter for free wild. You can subscribe to our newsletter for overnight success um, as well. And then if you're a beginner Airbnb host, you can also check out uh, get paid for your pad.com where we have sure. a lot of, a lot of resources for people to get started. And then obviously the podcast Get paid for your pad is on I you know the all the channels like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, all, all the things. That's a fact. Love it, love it. We'll make sure to include that in the show notes, guys. If you know if you're driving, keep your hands on the wheel. You know we got you. Uh we'll have that in the show notes. But I can't yeah, tell tell you uh, uh thank you enough for stepping into the lab with us. And um just want to thank Experiment Nation again for tuning in to another practitioner who came, saw conquered, and is still willing to wall out and do more into our ecosystem here so make sure you guys give him a follow and uh follow the movement thank you so much Jasper. and just like that we are out experiment nation podcasting has changed the way we operate as real estate investors ourselves and it can do the same for you podcasting has been the source of the master classes that we get thanks to the world class real estate investors and practitioners and specialists that come into the lab from all realms, from short-term rentals to mid-term rentals to real estate syndications to even software as a service, owners, founders, entrepreneurs have helped enrich our experiments by giving us the education, helping us build a network, and lastly, and most importantly, a brand association to open up multiple doors for our respective businesses. If you understand the power that podcasting can have, and you know that you need one for your brand, please, you can rely on our team. Investedtalent.com is my team and the team that helps this podcast, The Real Estate Experiment, become the fruition each and every single week to educate my community, build relationships on the air, and continue to build our brand. If you know that you need to do the same for your brand and you haven't pulled the trigger yet, maybe because you don't know how, our company, InvestedTalent.com, does the end-to-end -end from the time that you record to the time that it is published to even repurposing content on multiple social media platforms. That's what my team can do for you. Simply go to InvestedTalent.com and book a discovery call to see how my team can help you launch your podcast.